Mr. Ibu. I want to do a little testimony in line with other testimonies. I was living with my friend in Lagos. That was 1997. Let this story teach you a lesson. A friend of mine, a very good friend, a very fine friend of mine, he is the owner of the one-room apartment. He brought me in to squat with him. 1997, December 18, we were outside. He called me. Say, John, I they go home for Christmas or on the 23rd. I said, Me, I don't have money to go. Then I had only 20 naira in my pocket, home and abroad, bank, house, pocket, and purse. 20 naira. On the 18th, we were seated outside. This guy said, Boy, I want to go home. Christmas, and I don't want anybody in my room. And so, of course, you, I will not bring anybody. No, let me go there. there. He said, even me. That they want to lock his door and go home. I said, I beg. You know, I don't have another place to go. I thank you so much for keeping me. God will bless you. I was begging. I was busy begging him that morning. He, out of anger, he went into the room, brought my bag outside, threw it, and few of my clothes in the shelf, threw it outside, locked his door, and left. At that moment, so many spirits were talking to me. Ibu, kill yourself. One spirit again, quickly come, Ibu. Go to Sulure, you will see somebody that will help you there. The risk of spending the 20 naira, you don't see the person. Thunder go fire me that day. Immediately, another spirit came. Ibu, see that well, jump inside. Before evening, when they come back, if they want to draw water, they will hit bucket on you. I quickly take that one. Devil too strong, I tell you. Whenever devil they push you, no grio. I grieve for devil that day. I moved straight to the well. I hold the two lips of the well just to jump in. I saw the face of my mother inside the water. I, I, I dodge. Who tell her? My mother was still alive but advanced. How come I see my mother's face in that well? I slide back to the wall of the main building of that compound, leaning on the wall. A friend, and the big boy, actually, Living in the main building was playing a song by Michael Bolton. The title is, When I'm Back on My Feet Again. That sound came and every meaning of that lyrics was hitting my head. He said, I'm going to break these chains around me. To do this journey of life will be tough. But I'm going to do it. To fly again in life will be difficult. No matter how difficult it is, I will fly one day. He said, when I'm back on my feet again, I'll probably roll down the street so that all will look at me and know that I'm strong. That day, I was crying all through, but on the tone of the tears, I was praying. After that song, I said, okay, if I have killed myself, not even big mistake, I walk into the street. I was looking for anything that could cover my head. I saw a trailer. I have to go under the trailer it looked like where anybody could sleep. But guess what? I saw two dogs sleeping in the back of the trail. I lose my cartons. I pack and come out. I left there. Still into the street. I met some gathering. Peter Dochier was there. It was actually an audition for a new production. I met somebody. Stella Eze. He said, ah, Ibu, you are here. I bet go and Scott go somewhere. I follow him. That was how I got into a friend who was asking me to come and stay in his house about five years ago. He left for Germany. He came back yesterday. The guy came out and said, Ibu, wherever you are living in this Lagos, you will pack out today and come and stay here. One room is here for you. 
If I even not say they don't quit me, come out. He brought his car out. We went to the house. We packed my things to his house. After about six months, God don't answer me. He put on the one of his younger brothers sent a car to him. The boy that pushed me out of his house. He was telling somebody want to sell the car. I said, how much? He just said the price. I didn't price at all. I paid him cash there and then. That was my first car. I carried that car home. I reached my village. The only man when not get money for our area. We don't cage me since. Saw me and the car. He was like, you bought a car. Ibu, you bought a car. Like as if I commit offense. <laughs> Moto full man road. Why will you crucify me because of my own? I left that guy. When I got home, mama, mama, put your hands together for women, please. <laughs> My mom said, I'll be waiting for you to come back home because I know you're coming with something. This guy is the beginning. In your compound, there will be no chance. As I did talk to you now, <laughs> plus the only way pastor will give me <laughs> chance not to do my compound again. Hallelujah! 